through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Nick Robinson. Thank the you. star, I guess we call the lead of Kings of Summer, mm -hmm. a coming of age story that I would sort of describe as a combination of Super Bad and Stand by Me. Is mm -hmm. that is that a fair assessment? Yes, yes. Uh, we've we've heard, we've heard that one. Uh, I imagine that's probably times. been a couple yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, very, very fun film. Let me sort of start with this from the beginning. Uh, when you first sort of got this project. Did you have any idea of what it would sort of be like at the end? Were, what, what was it at the point you were thinking, okay, we might be on to something here? Um, well, the script was, was amazing, is amazing. Uh, it was written by uh, Chris Galletta. And uh, so we had a fantastic base to start from. Uh, and that's really where any project starts is the script. But I think when it really became real for me was uh, the first time I walked into the finished house in the woods. Yeah, that's pretty spectacular. It was it was so cool. And uh, <laughs> that was when I was like, all right, I think uh, maybe we got ourselves something. But it's, it's hard when you're working on a project to know how it's going to turn out. But um, I had a good feeling the whole time on this one. And you, I mean, you're someone who's acted in other stuff. You were, you've been on, what, Melissa and Joey for a couple of years now yeah, at this point. Yeah, a long time. So, but even still, like, you only began, what, like four years ago or something? Uh, I started film like four years ago, yeah. So is there any sort of, like, I don't know, um, shock or awe or whatever when you, you come to sense, like, oh, yeah, you're going to be opposite Megan Mullally and Nick Offerman and Alison Brie? Is that something that you find exciting? Um Stressful. What what is that like acting with those kind of people? Um, well, yeah. I mean, I I don't think it's ever going to get uh, it's ever going to get routine um, working with very talented people. But uh, it was it was intimidating. But I was mostly excited just to work with with these amazing actors. Um, but yeah, Nick Offerman, Allison Brie, Megan Mullally, Mark Evan Jackson. I mean, some of the, probably the funniest people I've ever met. And uh, it was just a, a very, very cool set to be on and just, just watch and learn. So the, the trio of you is at uh, Gabriel Basso mm -hmm. and uh, Moises Aries. Yeah. What was it like in terms of sort of cultivating that chemistry between the three of you? Because, you know, there's a lot, as we said, these famous people in the movie, but really the movie sort of succeeds because of the three of you and the relationships that you sort of develop. How, how long and what was it like sort of developing that uh, relationship with those guys? Um, well, yeah, well, like you said, the, the film centers on the relationship, and if the chemistry is not there, the film would just fall on its face. Totally. Um, <clears throat> so it was very important that there be, you know, chemistry. And luckily, we all got along really well. Nothing was, like, forced <laughs> or anything like that. Yeah, no offset. You're just like, fuck you. Yeah, man. nothing like that. It was, uh, we all, there's the, the chemistry was, was very genuine. Um, we actually all enrolled in um, improv classes before. Uh, oh, interesting! Before filming began, Jordan, our director, was uh, set that up for us. Um, one to you know get on our feet and our toes, get our improv uh, skills a little honed because we were going to be working with some of the greatest improvers <laughs> yeah. alive, and um, also just to uh, get to know one another and and make the first introduction. Um, uh, so yeah, it was it was very cool. And uh, most of the bonding we did, though, was on set in, in Ohio, in the woods, you know. You mentioned something, uh, improv. How much of it was actually improv? Because, I mean, I'm sure people like, you know, Nick Offerman and Megan Mullally are pretty much given, like, the green card to do <laughs> whatever they want to do. You don't, you don't tell someone like that, like, like wait, 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 wait. Be less funny. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, come no, on. No, 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 no. More, more script, more script. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but how much of it was actually improv by you guys? Um, a, a fair amount. I mean, Jordan, he comes from Second City, and uh, okay, yeah. his, uh, so he has a background in improv, and he ran a set that was, that was, that was loose, relaxed, but still very focused, um, and he would just let the cameras roll and, and just kind of see what happened organically. Uh, you know, we would, we would do sometimes 20-minute takes of just of Nick and, and Megan just all <laughs> riffing, and I'd try and throw in a few lines when uh -huh. I could, you know. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, the, uh, as the film progressed, I got more and more comfortable improvising as Joe, as the character. And um, 
uh, it, it a lot of it made it into the film actually that's very cool mm-hmm. so I mean as I said the film is a coming of age story yeah. what's it like working on a coming of age story because it's one of those genres where sort of like you don't set out to make a classic you can't tell that you're going right. to make a classic right the bit like what i mean what's what, what are some of your favorite uh coming of age movies and sort of how did it feel to be sort of in that position of where this is a story of this boy who sort of grows up through this experience of building this house um well uh, a lot of the films that these have been that this has been compared to are also some of my favorite coming of age stories like Stand By Me obviously uh, The Goonies um, that's a great one yeah yeah E.T. I mean uh, you can um, there's, there's many many ones there's, there's many there's yeah. many yeah but uh, it was very cool to um, even be mentioned in the same breath as those films and uh, yeah I, I just tried to um I wasn't 15 all that long ago, so I only three years ago. So I was just, I tried to kind of Can bring relate, some of yeah. that back and bring some of that, uh, you know, wanting wanting to be an adult but not really sure how to go about that. And everyone still treats you like a kid. And um, it's just a very, it's a kind of a strange age. You're just in this kind of limbo state, not sure, um, not sure what's going on. Yeah. But uh, uh, so I just tried to bring some of that and still have that. That Joe is a like a wonder and just imagination for the totally. world and uh, yeah. So you come from a background that seems to be very much more sort of regimented. You know, TV is a very sort of regimented routine. What was it like working on this set? Because this set, like at least from the outside looking in, looks like it'd be a pretty wild project. You mentioned like the house. That seems like it'd be a pretty crazy location to be working in i mean a lot of the stories told outdoors um what is it like sort of working in that coming from a sort of more regimented background um it was it was very refreshing i liked having just this uh there's a lot of creative freedom on set it was just very very open um you could kind of just just kind of Jordan was very open to you trying things if you want to try something like hey you know can i just give this a shot like go ahead yeah of course and if it didn't work, you'd be like, "All right, well, let's you can try it again, or you know, we can let's talk this out." And um, so it was it was a lot of fun. It was uh, features are just kind of a whole different animal, and uh, it was uh, yeah, it was unlike anything I'd ever done before, and it was just it was a great experience. Uh, I mean, one of the things that's sort of an interesting story about this is that you're from Seattle. What is it like actually having a film in SIF? And sort of like, you know, all your friends and family can sort of come and check that out. I mean, is that like that moment? I mean, you've been on TV for years, so I guess it might not be quite as exciting. But is it like, look, I'm finally like really an actor or something like that? I don't know. Uh, it's very strange. It's very surreal. And like uh, yesterday, there was the SIF premiere at um, Pacific Place. And I have seen so many movies at Pacific Place. Yeah, like I used I mean, to go there all the time. Like I'd take the bus. It's like from, the main theater from, in Seattle. Yeah, I'd take the bus from Queen Anne and and come downtown and go see a movie. And so it was very strange then being in front of an audience there, like introducing a film that <laughs> is now playing at a theater that I used to sit in and watch movies in. It was crazy, um, but it, it's been very cool and the audiences have been just fantastic. So. Uh, yeah, Seattle's, Seattle's a great movie town. What was the biggest sort of challenge for you in this making this movie? One of the, I mean, it seems like, you know, finding, for me, would be finding, say, the balance between the drama and the comedy. I mean, you are able to change between the two of them. I mean, the second half of the movie is fantastic because of sort of that intensity to it. But what was the most challenging thing for you as an actor in doing this movie? Um... The most challenging thing uh, in general, I think, would be the schedule. Like, we had 26 days. We, we shot this in 26 days, and it was just a very demanding shoot. Lots, long hours. Um, and I guess uh, it, was, it, was, it was kind of tough to... Um, I wanted to make sure that the, the change was very real. There has to be a change taking place, otherwise it's not a coming-of-age story. So... Uh, you know, when when Joe was left alone in the woods, that's kind of a very key moment where he uh, has to kind of confront the choices that he made and um, kind of comes into his own because of that. You know. 
Uh, it just made me think of that snake scene. What was it like filming the snake scene? Because that's such... It's a dramatic scene. It's a funny scene. It's a, I mean, a scary scene. It's all of those rolled into one sort of beautiful capper of a scene. Um, well, first of all, that snake was an asshole. He did not <laughs> like the camera. He would, like, slither away and hide in corners of the house, and he wouldn't, you know, bite the food that we put in front of him. Um, but uh, that, that was, I mean, it was fun. We had, a, it was a, a gopher snake, so non-venomous. Uh, just looks like a copperhead. And, uh, uh, yeah, that was, um, that was interesting. Like, two days of of lots of cussing on Jordan's part before we were able to get what was actually needed with, you know, him slithering up close to me and, like, getting in his strike position and stuff like that. I also got to ask about uh, working with that kid Moises. Like, he is such He's, an interesting dude. Like, yeah. what was it like? I mean, it feels like, I mean, and this speaks to, I guess, everyone. How challenging was it just to not laugh all the time on uh, the it set? It was so tough. I was biting my tongue so hard half the time. Uh... And Moises is absolutely hilarious as Biagio. He killed it. Uh, it was really just... Um, I don't know, the funniest part for me was actually knowing him in real life and then seeing him change into this character because he is nothing like, like at all, even remotely like Biagio. Uh -huh. He's... Uh, He's an OG. He's like a thug. Like, actually, though, he's like a thug. So it was very strange to see him come on set with his, like, gold chains and shit. Be like, what's up, dog? And then go into his Biagio character. Of, That's like, awesome. It was, yeah, it's cool. All right, so you've got this film coming out now. Do you have anything else in the works that uh, people should be aware of? Or do you have a website, Twitter, or anything that people can keep up to date that you have? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so this summer, I'm hoping to do some some traveling and be like backpack around Europe or wow, something that be very fun. cool yeah um, and uh, I'm working on Melissa and Joey right now we've got our fourth season coming up um, we're gonna start filming that in the fall and uh, uh, after that I'm hopefully uh, headed to to uh, NYU actually so oh, very good congratulations thank on you that. thank you we'll just see how timing works out and everything sure. but uh, yeah, so if you want to keep in touch, you can follow me on Twitter at Nick J. Robinson or, uh, easy. or Instagram at Nick J. Robinson. <laughs> um, so yeah, get at me. All right. Very cool. Thank you so much, Nick. And uh, check out more interviews at MacGuffin.com, MacGuffinPodcast.com. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. It's tight, don't even try to bite the side of style. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.